Our next speaker um, is uh, Jensen Ong, the executive director of the Chinese Community Policing Center. Uh, Jensen is the, uh, the or the, the center is a registered charity based here in Vancouver, Chinatown which works in collaboration with the Vancouver Police Department uh, as a community partner um, and a volunteer to reduce crime and enhance safety in Chinatown. Um, in Vancouver, we have a community policing um, uh, program where different organizations and community members are able to do on the ground work in partnership uh, for public safety. They run programs to support um, uh, on the ground uh, and safety, assist Chinese speaking victims of crimes through uh, and others through translation interpretive services and facilitate better um, access to policing in the judicial system, as well as having a better understanding of what our rights as Canadians are uh, in terms of follow up and for our own public safety. Uh, Jensen, thank you so much for having us or for being here with us. Thank you very much, Yusuf and Tari and Foundation for a path forward for inviting me to join this event. It is an honor for me to meet and learn from the panel of speakers today. I would like to start off by respectfully acknowledging that the Chinese Community Policing Center is located on the unceded traditional territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. In the World Economic Forum 2020, it was shared that this information and misinterpretation of COVID-19 virus is mutating and spreading faster than the virus outbreak itself. The consequences of online disinformation rapidly circulating all over the world demonstrated how the power of the internet and social media can exponentially trigger racial resentment and prejudice. And I still believe that it is still happening now. As what Alan has shared earlier, anti-Asian hate incidents in Canada have increased by 47% from 2020 to 2021. There were 943 racist incidents reported across Canada in 2021. The Vancouver Police Department stated in a news release that there was a 425% increase in anti-Asian hate crime incidents in Chinatown between 2019 and 2021. Like what um, MP Ms. Jenny Kwan pointed out earlier, a senior was recently attacked around Chinatown a few days ago, and he was targeted, and uh, he was actually attacked with a bear spray. It happened just within the vicinity of where we are located, and we are saddened to hear that news. As part of our organization's efforts to address anti-Asian hate issues, and in response to what Ryan has shared earlier on concrete actions that needed to be put in place, I thought if a good opportunity for me to share three areas on what our organization is doing. Firstly, I'd like to emphasize the importance and necessity of reporting anti-Asian hate incidents to the police. In our engagement to the communities, we continue to see many unreported cases of such incidents. We continue to urge the public, whether in the capacity of victims of crimes families, friends, or witnesses to report such incidents and to do so immediately. By doing so, it will help the authorities to have a more accurate understanding of what is happening in the neighborhoods and provide the necessary support. We do serve the Chinese speaking clients by pro providing translation and interpretation services if they need us to. Secondly, we work with community partners to organize personal safety workshops for the public. Such workshops help to equip the participants with the skills and awareness of how best to stay, to stay safe and respond to anti-Asian hate incidents. Along with some other community policing centers, we have been distributing personal safety alarms at outreach events so users can use them to deter attackers and alert bystanders for help and assistance. I personally attended an anti-Asian dialogue session among seniors in April a few months ago where participants shared personal experiences and exchanged learnings on how our communities work together to strengthen the immunity of our societies against hate crimes. Thirdly, we have a team of passionate and dedicated volunteers supporting our Chinatown Watch program. Our volunteers not only regularly patrol the streets of Chinatown, 
but they also speak to the businesses and public on how to enhance their personal safety. We hope that by doing so, we can make Chinatown a safe place for everyone to visit, for businesses to operate, and to make it a more vibrant community. Here at the Chinese Community Policing Center, we strongly believe that character building in children is important to help them understand they should be respectful of others and how they can embrace cultural differences. There are already character and citizenship education programs implemented by schools today. These programs will help instill the right ethical and responsible behaviors in them as they grow up to be civic-minded adults. So with all the above, um, I thank everyone once again, and the Chinese Community Policing Center look forward to working together with everyone to build a hate-free Canada, hate-free BC community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jensen. Again, the work you guys are doing is so important, especially in the grassroots level, protecting senior citizens while they're walking, ensuring the vibrancy of the local neighborhoods uh, where people live and work and helping to bridge that connection for new people who come to Canada, especially those with a hopeful expectation who might encounter um, racism or hate and, and how to help them through that process. It's of vital importance because ours is an immigrant country. Um, most people, I mean, everyone who's not First Nations is an immigrant or from an immigrant background one way or another. So by you guys working to support them, it's so vital and important. So thank you for your work. And we really appreciate you being here with us. We look forward to continuing our conversation um, with you and your organization uh, in the future. Thank you very much, Jensen.